hello guys here welcome back to my youtube channel today we are going to create this character introduction freeze effect in premiere pro you must have seen this effect in a couple of movies this video was inspired by the character introduction effect that was used in the film snatch directed by guy ritchie he used this effect very effectively to introduce the characters in this film so now i'm going to show you how to create similar effects now inside premiere pro i've already got this clip on the timeline that we are going to use for this tutorial first i'm going to scrub through the timeline and find the point that we want to freeze. I think that this will do. Now we can cut the track by hitting the C key and then cut the track at this point. Now switch back to the selection tool by hitting the V key or selecting this arrow over here. I also want to freeze motion at this portion of the timeline so I'm going to right click on this portion of the cutout part and then click add frame hold. This will freeze the rest of the video at the current frame. Next thing you want to do is to duplicate this portion of the clip. So you're going to select your Alt key and drag this portion up. And that will automatically duplicate this portion. Next you want to do is to select the track above and then move over to the effects control tab and select the free draw base here. And now we need to draw a mask around our subject over here. But first we need to zoom in to draw our mask more accurately. So I'll set my mask to probably 75 and now I can begin masking over here so now I'm going to speed up this part so you don't have to wait Okay now so the first mask is done, let me go back and hit it back to fit so you can see that the first mask is done but you can also add more masks if any part of your clip has not been properly masked out. For example, if I go back to 25% you can see that I was unable to mask out this portion over here. So to fix this quickly I'll just take it back to 50% and go back to select my free job bezier tool over here and automatically you will see that another mask has been created. And I can go ahead and begin to draw another mask over here. Alright, that is complete. So I'll go back to fit. And the next thing you want to do is to change the mask feather to zero on both masks. And that's because these effects will look a lot better without feathering. Next, we are going to animate our mask. So we are going to add keyframes to our scale and position property. And move these scales to the beginning of the clip. So we'll move forward a little bit and add a new keyframe and scale. So I'm going to increase my scale now and change my position values. Alright guys, so I'm going to reduce this, the length of this freeze frame to the length where I want this effect to last. So I'm going to move my keyframes over here to that same position where I want this effect to end and make sure that i adjust the duration of this freeze frame to match that same position so what i have done right now is i have changed the value of the scale and the position as you can see so right now the image at the background is a little bit distracting so to fix this we are going to select the bottom layer and then move over to the effects panel now we are going to search for the gaussian blur effect and apply this to the bottom layer we are also going to apply the black and white effects. So move over to your effects control panel and under the Gaussian blur effect, set your blurriness to 100% and repeat edge pixel. And a quick preview, and this is what we have created so far. Now we need to next the layer that has the mask, so we'll select the top layer right click and hit on nest you are meant to put a name over here and hit on ok ok nested sequence has been created we can now add some effects to it so go back to the effects tab over here and search for the radial shadow effects 
Next, apply this effect to the nested layer and as you can see, this has now created a bit of a shadow. But in this case, we don't want a shadow, we want to add a hard outline or a stroke around our subject. So you can come over to your effects control tab over here and change the shadow color from black to white and turn the opacity from 50 to 100 and reposition the stroke by playing around with the light source value. Try to make it equal on all sides of the subject and in case the projection is still too thick, then play around with the distance. So I've set my distance to 3.5 or you can also check the resize option over here. In the next steps, we are going to add some optional items in the background. So to do this, I'm going to move my nested layer few tracks above. Now the first layers that I'm going to add are some ink splashes or some strokes background. I'm just going to add it to the second layer over here. Now I'm going to change the value. Next, I'm going to add a text and place this text layer in my third layer over here. But I'm kind of old school, so I usually prefer to use File, New, Legacy Title. And over here, I will select my text icon over here, T, and type Character Reveal. Just for this to be visible, I'm going to change the color to red. Alright, so I'm going to increase the scale. And I'm going to create, duplicate this by holding Alt and dragging it down and change this text to effect. Next, I'm going to align this properly. Alright guys. And I will drag my text into my third layer right beneath my subject over here. In the next step, we are going to change the color of the ink splash over here. I will link this in the description for you to download. So I'm going to select the ink splash over here, move over to the effects tab and search for change to color. Select this and drop it right on my ink splash. Move over to my effects control tab. Change the from section from white to black and hit OK and change the two from this white to this color of her heart over here. Next I'm going to change from hue to hue lightness and saturation and to make this text visible now I'm going to double click on my text right here. Change the color from red to white. Select the effect and change the color from red to white also. In the next step, we are going to animate the background and the text. First, I'm going to select the ink layer over here, and then I'm going to enable keyframes on scale and rotation. Now I'm going to move these keyframes to the beginning of the clip, change the rotation value. So I'm going to move this to the end, to some portion close to the end, and change the scale and the rotation also. and then move the keyframe to the end. Select the text over here and add keyframes to the scale and rotation values. Then move the keyframes to the beginning of the clip and apply some rotation to the text at the beginning and move somewhere to the end of the clip and then create a new keyframe to the rotation and the scale. A quick preview. And this keyframe and rotation added together looks something like this. Okay, let's move over to the final step of this tutorial. Now we are going to select all the layers over here and nest them. To do this, we are going to select them, right click and hit on nest and then hit OK. Next, you go back to your effects panel and search for the deep to white effect and apply this effect in between your both layers. Select this and move over and select center at cut. Next you want to do is to hit on enter to render because as you can see this red over here is going to have some lags. And then after rendering we can now take a look at the final results. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this coming your way. See you in my next video and have a lovely day.